Give him a big round of applause. Good morning. I uh, want to go over some of the itinerary things and some of the rules. Um, can you do that for me? Yes, ma'am. All right, we're going to depart on, on Tuesday, January 27th. Uh, we're going to meet here in the cafeteria at 4 o'clock. That's important, ladies and gentlemen, because we need you to get here so you can get your luggage tag and get you separated so that we can lower the buses. Uh, all the communication you received up to this point says that we were leaving at 5.30. We are leaving at 5 o'clock. We have four buses. And with the fourth bus, it kind of slows things down, so we need to leave at 5 o'clock. My joke is, if you show up at 5.01 and the bus load is on, you will smell diesel fumes. Because we must leave at 5. <clears throat> Please scratch it out on your sheet. And make that five. We will return Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, <laughs> at approximately 8.30. Now what most of the chaperones and bus captains do is when we get close to the Georgia State line, we will start having your students call you. Because we have had your lovely babies for five days. <laughs> and when we get back, we would like to go home too. So if you could be back and we tell you that we're approaching the Florida State line, if you could be here, uh, we, we are usually within 20, 30 minutes we've offloaded and you're ready to go with your babies back home. Uh, you can put students can bring their suitcases to school that Tuesday. We'll find some place for them to store them until time for them to come to the cafeteria. So if they're coming that day, uh, check with your history teacher. We'll figure out, uh, we'll put them in that room next to mine. Uh, and, and Ms. Van Dolce's over. <coughs> I'm going to let Ms. Swanton come talk to you about luggage right now. Okay, I'm going to talk to you about things that you need to pack. First, I'm going to talk about your carry-on bag that you need to have on the bus with you. We will not stop at the hotel until Wednesday night, so you will not be able to access the suitcase underneath the bus until we get to the hotel on Wednesday night. So in that bag, you need to have a complete change of clothes for Wednesday. Okay, I would suggest that on the bus, I'm gonna wear sweatpants, t-shirt, sweatshirt, something very comfortable, okay? Because you're gonna be on the bus all through the night. And then we'll stop at a rest stop and change clothes. Things that you would need would be your hats, gloves, scarves, anything for cold weather, your jacket, toothbrush please, and toothpaste, and deodorant, and clean socks, okay? Whatever it is that you need that you would put on the next day. If you wear contacts, please make sure that you have your contact solution or anything like that. I know one year we had a kid who couldn't put his contacts in because they were below the bus and he couldn't see anything most of the day. Okay? Um, ladies, any personal items? I'm winking, you know what I mean? Please make sure you have that with you. Okay? If, if you think you're going to need it that week, please take it. That's all I'm going to say about it. Okay? As far as what to pack, you need five changes of warm clothes. I would suggest I have um, like cuddle duds or thermals that I would put on under uh, my jeans. Um, I have very thick socks. As far as your shoes go, um, you need to make sure that you have closed-toed shoes, please. It seems ridiculous that I have to say that, but we've seen it. Okay, and no Sperry's. That's not going to help you in the wet cold. Um, and girls, a lot of times we get the, they're like an Ugg boot, okay, and they're not waterproof. Now, obviously, Uggs you can waterproof, but the cheap kind um, will fall apart in the, in the snow. We had a boot fall apart one year, or the ones that kind of look like a sweater, like that sweater look, okay. If those get wet, they will fall apart. We had one girl whose boots fell apart one year, and we had to go and get stuff. We've had to buy clothes before for kids because stuff like that happens. So please make sure you're wearing a comfortable shoe that is warm 
and that if it gets wet, it's going to be okay. Um, some of Warm is the best thing that I can say. Mr. Cole will tell you the coldest day of his life was two years ago at Arlington National Cemetery. We do a lot of walking around outside, okay, which means that, especially in the evenings, we do the, the memorials, and it can get really cold, especially if you're walking around the basin. Um, the, the wind comes off of that. You need to make sure you have layers. Okay, I would suggest layers because you can always take layers off, but it's hard if you don't have anything to put layers back on. Um, hand warmers, I always go to like Gander Mountain or some sporting goods store. I think anywhere you go into a hunting section, I always put hand warmers in my gloves or keep them in my pocket. Um, but make sure that everything you have is really warm. Okay, five days worth. Um, also, you can have snacks on the bus to put in your carry-on. If it's a drink, it has to have a screw top. So you might want to have a few snacks. We will stop um, on the way up to get something to eat, but sometimes kids want snacks, you know, whatever your kid eats. Um, so make sure you have that. I think that's all I can think of for things to pack. But please make sure you have this stuff in your overnight bag. I always take a pillow also and I stuff a blanket or you can get a Snuggie or something and put inside of it one of those. Yeah, the, the hats and the scarves, gloves. Make sure you have all of those things because it will be cold and we are outside a lot. Thank you, Ms. Wagner. Let me talk about uh, the changing of clothes in the morning. We'll have questions at the end. Uh, the changing of clothes. As she said, I'll leave here probably in sweats. Uh, parents, I'm going to ask that you check the weather. What it's going to be like for those five days so you can have your student pack. Um, but when we get, normally in the past, we've stopped about 30, about an hour before breakfast right outside of Alexandria, Virginia. I've just been advised we're not going to do that this year. At 2.30 in the morning, we are going to have to offload the buses so that we can fuel the buses. The students cannot be on the buses while we fuel the buses. It's at a huge truck stop. We're asking at this this year that this is where you will change into your clothes for the next day because they have enough space uh, for us to be able to change. So in your carry-on clothes, whenever you're going to ride up to uh, DCN, whenever you're going to change in that morning at about 2.30, we are going to wake you up. We are going to get off of the bus. And you're, while you're inside the truck stop, we're asking that you change then. So the things that Ms. Wendron said, the toothbrush, toothbrush toothpaste, uh, deodorant, run, things to freshen up with at that particular time. Uh, next, I want to talk about expected behavior while we're on this trip. Uh, both on the bus, uh, the tra attractions, museums, restaurants, and hotels. I'm looking at this group and I just realized that I'm the person that's been on this trip the most. That's not good. Uh, it's been a pleasurable experience all of the seven or eight years that I've gone. We get so many compliments. We have strangers that walk up to us and compliment our students on their behavior. They want to know what grade they're in. They want to know how old they are. And they just compliment our students on the way that they behave and how they, they act. And they, they find it strange for uh, students of this age. So students, keep this in mind. When we leave, you're not only representing James Weldon Johnson. You're representing what your parents have taught you. You're representing the city of Jacksonville. You're also representing the state of Florida. So we want to keep that reputation when we go. When we're in restaurants, say please and thank you to the waiters. Say excuse me. Ten, when we're out in public, just be courteous. Do the things that your parents have taught you to do. Uh, stay with your assigned group and be back on time. If your chaperone tells you to be back at 2, be back at 1.55. We have to move. It's a large group and a lot of things we do, we have to move in a timely manner. So if it's 2 o'clock, it's 2 o'clock. Now, if you can't come back on time, you're going to be stuck with me the rest of the trip. I can laugh, but we've got to be back on time. Walk. If it's icy up there and you fall, I don't want to make a trip to the hospital. 
So just walk. We will get there. Just walk. At the hotel, ladies and gentlemen, the young ladies will be on one floor, the gentlemen will be on another. In no time are you to be on the other opposite gender's floor. If I find you on the opposite gender's floor, you're going to have to have a conversation with me and it will not be a comfortable one. So if the girl's on the girl's floor, it's girl's only, not even step out of the elevator back. You stop and then they'll be fine. And you go, no time. All the girls will be on the boys' floor, or the boys will be on the young ladies' floor. We'll have two guys while we're on the bus and at some places. Please remain courteous, no sidebar conversations. It's an educational trip as well, so if you be quiet, you will, you, I guarantee you will learn something. So please put, uh, be courteous to the two guys in when we're in museums and on the bus with your two guys, in restaurants, uh, museums. We don't need you screaming and running through the facilities. Again, make sure you say thank you to your guides and service wherever we go. All right, this is a picture of the actual hotel that we stay on on First Street in Alexandria, Virginia. This is the, is this the third year did we use this hotel? Yeah. Okay, then this is the third year. <clears throat> All right, again, what Ms. Swearing just said, when we packed that bus, Tuesday, we're not opening the bottom of that bus until Wednesday about 6.30, okay? So if there's something you need and no uh, luggage under there, you won't get it until Wednesday. When we get to the room, there'll be a security guard on each floor. Normally on the board, on the, on the uh, boys floor, the security guard stays outside of my room. So if there's a problem, young man, I don't like to be awakened in the middle of the night. <laughs> unless it is in an absolute emergency. Please be mindful, be mindful that while we're at the hotel, there are other patrons at the hotel. We are not the only guests at the hotel. There could be somebody, hopefully not beside you or under you. So you, young men, we can't play WWE wrestling. You can't be jumping off of the beds and banging on the walls and wrestling and whatnot. Ladies, I know you all like to stay up and giggle and laugh. Gotta keep it up. Got to keep it down, okay? You don't have to go to sleep. I suggest that you do. But please, let's not disturb other people. <clears throat> Every night, uh, a set of chaperones will come around to your door. I will make sure that everyone is in the room. We won't come into the room unless it's absolutely necessary. I normally stand at the door. I have a sheet. I call a roll. I put my eyes on every, all of the young men. I give you your instructions for the next day. And then I put a piece of painter's tape on the door, real snug. Because if you try to open the door, the tape is going to pop. If the tape is popped the following morning, and they come and tell me, that's another conversation that you don't want to have with me. Our number one priority on this trip is your safety. Our number one priority on this trip is your safety. So these things are put in place not to hamper your fun, but to make sure that you are safe. In the mornings, you will be killed. Someone will come by and knock on your door at 6 o'clock to wake you up. Uh, breakfast will be served at the hotel lobby. Uh, usually it's a nice spread, grits, eggs, sausage, toast, pancakes, food, tea, coffee, uh, the whole nine yards. So we'll eat and then we'll load the bus for the day to get ready. Cold weather and possible snow. We normally eat at food courts. When we eat at lunch, the chaperones will pass out money to you. I'll feed you to buy your lunch. Now, on Tuesday night when we go up, that's the only meal that really parents that you per se are responsible for. When we stop and we leave here, we'll stop at exit three in Georgia to eat. There's McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's. Let me answer this question for you students now. There is a Chick-fil-A across the street. The answer is no. <laughs> and the reason the answer is no, because I know you're asking me, well, why? You have to cross the service road, go across the ditch, cross the railroad tracks, and then a four-lane highway. So the answer is no. Parents, um, spending money, you know your child. Okay, it is, it is just fascinated me the last several years. They have the same stores that we do. 
Forever 21. <laughs> and they just get to the mall and come back with all of these bags. Like, we don't have these stores in Florida. So that's a $100, but you know your child. So uh, we do go to a souvenir mall. We go to the Pentagon Mall. It's a five-story mall. We're only there for about an hour to eat. We go there because it's a food court that gives us a variety of places to eat. But they do have the opportunity to shop while they're there. I'm going to let Mr. Cole talk for a little bit, then I'll close out. Good morning. Okay, just a couple of things to add what they said. Um, spending money, exactly what Coach Washington said, you would be shocked to see what your children want to buy. Don't buy something that you can get in Florida, specifically video games. Parents, please check your kids' bags before we leave and make sure they have not packed their Xbox. 360, their PlayStation 3, and any of those game consoles because you don't want them getting damaged and we don't want them staying up all night. Because gentlemen, you're going to see my face at 6 a.m. I'm the one who wakes you up and I'm the one who makes you do calisthenics and exercises when I turn the lights on. You don't want to be up till 3 bouncing around and playing video games. Okay, um, like Coach Washington said, safety is our biggest concern. and. This trip, you know, this is my third year going. He's been seven or eight years, Miss Winters, in five or six or so. We have this streamlined and kind of figured out to a T. And we travel all together. Like you said, there's four buses. The safety issue, I know there's a lot of concern from parents over who's going to be with their kids and who's going to be watching over them. For majority of the time, 80% of the time, we are moving as an entire unit, as all four buses, with the nine staffers and the 16 chaperones that we have. Um, there are certain times when we do break up, certain, certain buses will go to one memorial and another bus will go to another memorial and we kind of swap. The key is, is that we always travel in groups. The chaperones are always with them. The only circumstances where the kids are kind of out on their own are when we are confined to one location. For example, the Pentagon Mall. We sit down together and we eat, the kids can eat, and then they're given about 40 minutes an hour to kind of peruse them all, go together, but they're always traveling in numbers, always in groups of four. They never leave each other. If they ever do leave each other, they're gonna be with Coach Washington, Ms. Burton, myself, Ms. Swearingen, because I'm gonna echo what Coach said, this could be a very memorable trip. It could be a memorable trip for the right reasons, or it could be a memorable trip because you spend the entire time with us. You have to be with each other at all times. That's the key. Safety is the key, and we're going to make sure that, that your, your children are looked after the whole time. Um, next is medicine. I, uh, part of my responsibility in putting this together was getting together the, the medical boxes for each one of the buses, so I've ensured that we have basically the standard over-the-counter stuff from cold and flu medicine, anti-nausea, kaopeptate, anti-diarrheal stuff. We have chapstick and cough drops, paper towels, Kleenex, all, the whole nine. But if, if there's a specific scenario for your kid where you have medical prescriptions or even over-the-counter allergy medicine, um, what the, the protocol for that is to count out the dosage that they're gonna need for the week and just store it into a plastic bag. What we also find to be very helpful is if you either print out or, or write out instructions with that prescription and slide it in the bag with their name on it. Um, that way, each bus captain can pull whoever aside at a time that they need to take their prescription and we can make sure that they get that medicine, whether it's over the counter or prescription. Um, make sure that you give it to us before you leave because we are leaving at five sharp and if the medicine's not there, we can't turn around and come back. You know, that's a priority for us to make sure that your kids are safe and they have all the amenities, everything that they need uh, before we even take place. Um, and I want everybody, like, dealing with the behavior, I'm just piggybacking on kind of what Coach Washington said. Each one of the buses, there's four bus captains, and there are going to be moments in time when we step up and we turn on the microphone on the bus, and the, the microphone comes on and we say, okay, ladies and gentlemen, 
Everybody hear that? That's what it needs to sound like when the microphone comes on. Because we have 140 plus people moving in unison. Time is of the essence. We have to get to certain areas, certain places where we have appointments, certain tours, and we have to move efficiently. This is going to be a great trip and it's going to be a whole lot of fun, but there's a time for, for that and there's a time that we're going to kind of cut loose. But when we ask for your attention, it's essential that we have it. Thank you. I need to clean up a few things that I've forgotten. And, uh, uh, Mr. Taggart, Ms. Burton can help me out here. Um, one thing I want to address, and this, I want every young man that is going on this trip to look at me. This is a conversation that I have to have every year. There are four of you in a room. There are two beds. You do the man. I don't have this problem with the young ladies. Now, you chose your roommates, am I correct? Am I correct, young man? Okay, you can't make anybody sleep on the floor. They paid the same amount of money that you did. I'm going to give you a few options. One sleeps with the head to the bed, the other one sleeps with his foot, head at the foot of the bed. One of you sleep under the sheets, the other one sleeps on top of the sheets. <laughs> Turn your backs to each other. <laughs> I do not want to get a phone call from a parent saying that my child is being made to sleep on the floor. If you just can't feel that you can sleep next to that person, you sleep in the bathtub. <laughs> Understand, young men? Number two, young men, when we get there on Wednesday night, you will take a shower before you go to bed. <laughs> telling you this, these are things that I've experienced over the last eight years. You will take a shower when you get there. And use the other one. Thank you, Mom. Please leave your PlayStation 25 home. Please leave your Xbox, whatever they call it. The last game station I bought was PlayStation 2. You bring your tablets. We do have Wi-Fi on the bus, but we, there's only so many. Uh, there's uh, outlets on the bus that you can use. Um, Here's the thing about the Wi-Fi, because not only is it convenient, yes, but you're on a bus that's moving. So if the amount of you that are all on one bus try to use this Wi-Fi all at the same time, you're going to be unsuccessful and then you're going to stand up and freak out and say, I can't use my Wi-Fi! And I'm going to put my headphones on and put my head back down and finish my, my nap because that's not important. We're going to be very considerate. There will be times that maybe we say the front of the bus can use the Wi-Fi and then the back of the bus or the right side of the bus or the left side, but we're not going to all try to use them all at the same time. Okay, also with the outlets, it's every fourth seat. So, you get an hour of charging, then let me get an hour of charging, okay? We're going to be very considerate when it comes to the electrical outlets on the bus and the Wi-Fi. Buses. I am real particular about keeping my bus clean. And so the other chaperones there will be when you eat something and you eat it, they'll have the trash bags front, middle of the bus, and the back. Please put it in the trash bags. The bus drivers sweep and mop the buses at night for us, and we try not to give them any extra work to do. Um, as far as the medication, a lot of you just put down if their child had prescription medications. And if, if, if you guys can move to the side for a second. We, I brought these crates here, and this contains all of those emergency forms that you completed before the trip. And what I'm going to strongly suggest, although um, Mr. Cole did indicate that we have a few items, 
Parents, I'm going to strongly suggest that you have your children bring their own items, but they need to be documented on the form. So after the meeting is over, please feel free. They're alphabet alphabetized. Just let your fingers do the walking. Find your child's form. Put down Tylenol, whatever it is that you can anticipate because, I mean, I'm used to cold weather, I come from New York, but a lot of the kids here are not used to anything below what we've been having here, and it gets very, very cold up there. So you will have the opportunity to go through those um, at the end after we're done. I'm just going to take a moment to have Mr. Tackett say a few words to you, so can we give him another round of applause? Okay. Number one, I need to correct something that was stated earlier. I am not a tour guide. I'm not a tour guide. I'm along for the ride. Each bus will have its own tour guide, and they will lecture the history of Washington, D.C., and tell you about all the different buildings that you'll be going into. And as Mr. Washington stated earlier about the gentleman on this motor, motor coaches about the shower business, there's not a sign that says dry clean, turn the water on. It helps. And for all you students, I know you'd like to uh, participate in a nice snow activity. I can guarantee you it will snow next week. Follow the weather channel. I just don't know where. <laughs> but I know it's going to snow all three days. So um, if any of y'all have any questions for me, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Anybody have a question? No questions? Good. No. Anything. I'm a wealth of knowledge, I just don't know much. And I'll be here. In this rest area and we have to change. I know we said toothbrush, we said deodorant. Please bring a washcloth, a little hand towel, and some shower gel. So you can hit those important areas if need be. Okay? Right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, if it's prescription drugs, it needs to remain in the original container. Nebulizing machine in the past. 
past, we've kept those with the with the uh, the bus captain. <clears throat> All right, I said two. I'm gonna, just one last question. Um, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. One last thing, and then I'm, I'm, I'm saying we're going into the White House on Saturday morning, ladies and gentlemen. When we go into the White House. No cell phones, no Bluetooth, no cameras, no nothing. 